running Never bothered about what could be coming Every day we danced and life was smiling We were young and drunk in love Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by today for my 21 and 22 week update for my twin pregnancy. I am so glad to have you here. If you are new around here, welcome to my channel. I am a mom. I have a daughter named Chloe who is two, going to be two and a half soon. And I'm currently carrying twin babies, one boy who's going to be named Miles and one girl who's going to be named Mackenzie. And they are due in just a couple of short months. So we are slowly preparing to welcome these beautiful twins into our lives. I am going to be filling you guys in on the last couple of weeks. I'm currently 23 weeks pregnant, but I'm going to be talking about weeks 21 and 22 so that you guys can know all of the symptoms I went through um, and all of the growth of the babies, stuff like that. Uh, for those of you wondering, because every time I have a change of location, I get so many comments asking, um, where are you? What room are you? And I haven't seen that room in your house before. Um, so I am currently sitting in my daughter's room. Now, this is not going to be her room for long because it will be being changed over to the twins nursery. So we currently live in a three bedroom and of the two um, that aren't the master, this is the larger room. So we are going to be um, having both of the twins in here. Their cribs will be up against this wall. Um, as you guys will see in a upcoming video, whenever we do finish the nursery, um, I will put a video up for you guys all about that. Um, but for now, this is still my daughter Chloe's room. So if you're wondering, wow, change of location, where are you in your house? That is where I am. <sighs> I'm already getting out of breath and we are three minutes into the video, probably not even. <laughs> That is just the way that it goes these days. These babies are getting very, very big. As you can tell, my bump already goes like up to the bottom of my bra, um, which for 23 weeks is pretty big. Um, okay, so let's talk about the last couple of weeks and what happened, um, how things have been going for me, etc. So I'm gonna grab my phone and I'm going to just look over a couple of my symptoms from the past week. Okay, so during week 21, I had a lot going on. The biggest and most exciting thing that happened during week 21 was Ryan finally got to feel the baby's kick. Um, it was so cool. He's now felt them several times, and I mean, their kicks are getting strong. Especially what I'm guessing, I think, is Miles, because if, they're, if they haven't moved positions, Miles is... Feet, his feet are up here and his head is down here and then Mackenzie's feet are down here and her head is up here. So over in this area, I get some huge kicks. Like you can see them coming out of my belly. Um, and then I do get some kicks lower that I think are more Mackenzie's, but I don't feel hers as strongly because Miles's placenta is located down here and I think his placenta takes some of the brunt of her kicks, so I don't feel her kicks as strongly as I feel his up here. Um, but they are getting crazy, and yes, Ryan has gotten to feel them, which is so awesome. I can feel them from the outside, which is like cool for me too, because yes, I'm used to feeling them kick me from the inside, but feeling it from out here or seeing it actually is so awesome. So that was the most exciting thing to happen during week 21. Um, my crazy dreams are back. So if you guys recall, or if you watched my earlier pregnancy updates in the very beginning of my pregnancy, I had crazy wild dreams and wild dreams are like a very normal part of pregnancy for me. It's actually one of the very first symptoms that I get when I become pregnant and it has happened during my pregnancy with Chloe. Before I even knew I was pregnant, I started getting crazy dreams. Um, same thing with the pregnancy that I miscarried um, and then the same thing with this current pregnancy is the very first symptom I get is I get these wild dreams and I'm like, hmm, wonder what's going on there. So <laughs> those dreams had sort of subsided for a while and I had 
probably a good like eight weeks of not having these crazy dreams, but they are back. I am definitely having crazy, vivid, wild dreams. And, um, you know, I really should keep a journal and like write them down as soon as I wake up because after a little while they sort of like dissipate and then I don't remember them anymore. Um, but I know that they're, I've just been waking up with these like crazy dreams. Another symptom that happened during week 21 was that I started to really feel my SPD pain again. Um, and as I've mentioned before, like, I started to feel it a little bit um, a few weeks ago and just here and there, but it is definitely getting stronger. Um, and it basically, for those of you who haven't had SPD pain during pregnancy, it basically feels like your pelvic bones are like moving and grinding against each other and pushing down really hard and it just creates this whole like pain and pressure in that area um, and I do think it's happening um, a little bit more this time around because there are two babies in there pushing down but they say that the reason for it is that this hormone that your body releases called relaxing um, it's not supposed to really release in high quantities until later in the pregnancy when your body has to relax for like childbirth and your pelvic bones need to be able to separate and stuff like that. And some people's bodies just react earlier to it. And so that's basically what happens to me during pregnancy is that either it's letting more of that hormone out sooner or my body's just reacting to it sooner. One way or another, it ends up causing some pain for me during pregnancy. But um, if I can try and keep off of my feet, take breaks frequently, um, stuff like that, it is really helpful. Um, the hardest time for me is definitely working because I have gone back to work a little bit. I'm not um, working full time or anything like that, but I have been able to do a few um, jobs, which for those of you who don't know, I do hair and makeup for weddings. So I'm on my feet for, you know, six hours, eight hours, sometimes, you know, starting very, very early in the morning. Um, and so those days are very hard because by the end of them, I'm just, first of all, beat from being pregnant and on my feet, but also the pain is pretty bad. So, um, that's kind of my biggest negative symptom that I have right now. Um, but it's not, it's not the worst that it's ever been. Like it's at the end of Chloe's pregnancy, it was much worse. So I do anticipate it probably getting worse, but I think that pretty soon I'm gonna have to start wearing, I have a belly belt that helps kind of like lift your belly up. And I might have to start wearing that just to take a little bit of the pressure off. Um, as I told you guys, we are in the works of moving Chloe out of this room and into our her new bedroom. And then we're gonna start decorating in here getting the twins room all set up, um, everything. We actually ordered cribs, so we have cribs, we have mattresses. Um, we're just kind of waiting to get everything moved over so we can get them in. And I have had just the biggest ever nesting urge. <laughs> and I mean, I got this with Chloe and I got it early with Chloe too, I think. Um, I mean, we started her nursery so early. I think I had her crib by the time I was like 14 weeks pregnant. Um, but that was my first child too, so it was like extra exciting um, to be doing all of those things. <laughs> but um, I have had such a nesting urge. So I want to get all these projects that I have had um, planned out, completed, get the rooms moved over, get um, some painting done. You know, I just have this like list in my head of all the things I want to get done and I'm trying to do it all now because, you know, with twin pregnancies towards the middle of your third trimester, you're not really supposed to be doing anything. So, <laughs> you know, it's basically like hold the babies in at this point. So um, I'm really trying to get as much as I possibly can get done ahead of time before I get into the third trimester, before I get massive and run out of the energy that I have right now. And so I'm utilizing this nesting urge and just trying to get it all done. Um, another thing that I started doing during week 21 
is I started drinking like two to three times a week um, protein shakes. So I just ordered some protein shakes that are gluten free. Um, if you don't know, I am gluten free, so I um, have to just make sure I'm careful of the ingredients. So I ordered some that don't have any gluten in them. They are not great. <laughs> I kind of just have to like suck it up and like throw them back. The chocolate one is the best one. Um, so if I order more, I will probably just order chocolate. Um, but I have a banana one and a, and a strawberries and cream one and like, no, um, I'm, I'm not a big fan. <laughs> but I'm just trying to up my protein intake because as I've mentioned in previous videos, I don't have the hugest appetite. So I wanna make sure that I'm getting like all of the extra stuff that the babies need for just forming their body fat and their brains and all of that. And so um, I'm trying to eat as much as I can, but I think that the protein sh shakes are just a good way to supplement and um, try and help them get a little bit of extra protein as well. Um, so I'm only doing those about, like I said, two to three times a week. Okay, so during 22 weeks, um, I had to go back to the hospital. So um, if you guys saw my 19 and 20 week update, um, at 20 weeks, I had my anatomy scan. I inserted a little bit of footage of that in the 20 week, um, you know, video. Um, I got to see the twins for like three hours. It was great. Um, and it was really nice to be able to kind of be reassured that they're growing at a good rate and everything. Um, so 22 weeks, I just had to go back for a very short scan. So they didn't let me film this one. Um, but I do have some photos and so I'll insert a couple of the photos here um, of the babies and Mackenzie's face was facing my back at the time so her picture isn't super super great um, but Miles gave us a good profile and then we got a cute side-by-side -side photo of them and the ultrasound tech was like this might be the last time that you get both of them on one picture because they're starting to get really big um, so at that one, they were both doing extremely well. Their heart rates were both good. They didn't do a growth scan or anything like that, but they just checked in on them on like the major things. Um, and then they had to get a few images of Mackenzie that had gotten missed or like the images weren't clear enough from the anatomy scan. And so that was the real reason that they had me come back in and do that whole appointment. Um, but it was cool because I got to check in on them another time. And I actually have, my next appointment is scheduled for 24 weeks and I will have an ultrasound at that one as well. Um, that one's gonna be a growth scan. So we'll be able to see how much they've grown since 20 weeks and we'll be able to know exactly how big they are. Um, so I'm excited for the 24 week one. So make sure that you're subscribed so that you won't miss it when I up upload the 23 and 24 week one, especially if they will let me film. I don't know, I never know, depending on who's in there, if they're gonna let me film or not. Um, but if they do, then I will include that in the next video. So as I said a little bit earlier, we found out that um, Miles and Mackenzie were staying in the same positions basically. So her head's up here, her feet are down here, which means she's breech, but she's baby B. So baby B can be breech um, and Baby A, if baby A is head down, that is what we're looking for for um, me to be able to do a vaginal birth. So that's the hope. Um, if at the end of the day I have to get a C-section, I mean 50% of twin births are C-sections. So I am hoping to be able to do a vaginal birth like I did with Chloe, but if I'm not able to, then it's okay and we will proceed with whatever safest for the babies. Um, but at this point, Miles is head down, which is a good sign, and if he sticks around down there and Mackenzie sticks around up here, then that's okay. They could flip or they could decide that they like their positioning. So um, it's, it's just different between each pregnancy, um, but twin pregnancies generally, they stop flipping around as much as they get bigger, just because there's not nearly as much room for them anymore. Um, at least that is what I have been told. <laughs> Another symptom that I have been getting um, the past couple of weeks, and I think it did start probably at 21 weeks, 22 weeks maybe, um, have been Braxton Hicks. So 
I will get very, very tight. Like my, I had these with Chloe as well. My entire, especially the lower part, my entire um, uterus tightens up where it is like rock solid. Um, and it gets so tight and I do get like mild pain. Um, I wouldn't say that in any way it is close to a contraction feeling because when I had contractions with Chloe, although I didn't really get mild contractions, I went from no contractions to like extremely painful, very, very quick contractions just because my birth with Chloe progressed so quickly. Um, if you are interested, I have a story time all about my birth with Chloe that I did uh, like a year or so ago, um, telling you guys all about that. So you can watch that if you're interested in her birth story. But um, these don't feel like contractions. They just feel like it's tight um, and it lasts, you know, maybe 15, 30 seconds, but they're sporadic. They're not, you know, back to back. There's nothing that I'm concerned about with them. Um, and like I said, they're, they're uncomfortable, but they're not like painful the way that um, contractions are. So I wake up to go to the bathroom probably one to two times a night, um, generally. I would say about a third of the time I'm unable to fall back asleep, but the other two thirds of the time I'm able to fall back asleep easily. So on those nights that I can't fall back asleep, sometimes I lay in bed for a while and I eventually fall asleep, sometimes I don't, sometimes I have to play on my phone, sometimes I get out of bed, go downstairs, get a glass of water, watch a TV show, and then come back upstairs and go to bed. You know, it's, um, it's, <laughs> interesting but those are the things that tend to work for me even though everyone every expert in the world says no screen time you know like it'll wake you up more but for me it does help me to get more tired I guess so um, on nights that I'm not able to really sleep that well after going to the bathroom that's generally what I do so far I have gained about 15 to 18 pounds it's hard for me to judge because, um, and I may have mentioned this before, but I gained weight during my fertility treatment and then I lost weight during my first trimester. So I basically got back down to the weight I was pre-pregnant, which is somewhere around like the 152 range I think I was. Um, all these numbers, I can't even remember anymore, but anyway. I, um, but when I got pregnant, I was heavier from my fertility medication. So I was more like 155. And so at 150, if we, if we use 155 as the starting marker and just like, don't think about the fact that I like lost a couple pounds and gained a couple back, um, I would have gained 15 pounds so far, um, because I have now 170. And so I'm actually starting to put on more weight which is good because um, in the beginning, like I said, I lost weight and then I wasn't really gaining um, super quickly, but I talked about how my doctor isn't worried about it at all as long as the babies keep gaining. But I am happy to see that I've gained more at this point. So we hit the 170 mark at the very end of my 22nd week and um, I'm sure that that number is going to continue to uh, expand over the next couple of weeks as I continue to get bigger and these two babies continue to get bigger. So I know that the babies this week, during week 22, were the size of Willy Wonka chocolate bar. I seriously wish I had a Willy Wonka chocolate bar to just like show you guys how big that is, but it's about 11 inches. So if you think of a ruler, just like knock off an inch and that's about the length of the babies from their top of their head to the bottom of their feet um, during week 22, which is super, super exciting. I also know that the babies are now both over a pound, which is very, very exciting. They are continuing to grow so fast, so it's really good to hear they are over a pound each. We will soon be getting to the point, let's see, I believe it's 24 weeks. So at my next update that you guys see, they will have reached viability, which is a huge deal. So we are just waiting to get through until 24 weeks because that is when they're considered viable, when the NICU would be able to take care of them 
outside of the womb. Um, and that is a huge milestone in any pregnancy. So we're really, really close to that yeah. because it's very stressful being pregnant and always worrying about your baby. So every milestone that you hit, you just are so excited to have gotten that far and know that the next one is just around the corner. Okay guys, so I am going to read a little bit off of one of the apps about the babies and then about you know the changes happening in your body during week 22. And while I'm doing that, I'm also going to insert some of the footage from my favorite app, Pregnancy Plus, that shows you the size of the babies um, on your phone and what they look like accurately inside the womb. So your babies may be able to hear sounds faintly from inside your body as well, such as your breathing, your heartbeat, and your digestion. These sounds will grow louder as your baby's hearing improves. That's pretty cool. I love that they can hear my heartbeat in there. If you can see inside your womb, you'd be able to spot the fine hair called lanugo that covers their bodies and the deep wrinkles on their skin, which they'll sport until they add on a padding of fat to fill them in. So I had watched, um, I believe it's the what to expect when you're expecting app, and she talked about that as well. So their skin outgrew, <laughs> they, their skin grew faster than their fat did. So they got this like really baggy, saggy, wrinkly skin, and now the fat is going to start filling in that wrinkly skin so that you're gonna get your like adorable little chunky newborn <laughs> when they come out. But if you looked inside my womb right now, they would just have this kind of like flabby, like Sharpe, is that the name of that dog? Sharpe, <laughs> um, wrinkly skin. <laughs> A common symptom this week that you may notice is stretch marks on your abdomen as it expands to accommodate your growing baby. These small streaks of differently textured skin can range from pink to dark brown, depending on your skin color. Although, they most commonly appear on your tummy. Stretch marks may show up on your buttocks, thighs, hips, and breasts as well. So, so far, I have not gotten any stretch marks. Um, I do anticipate that I will get stretch marks during this pregnancy, even though I didn't get any during Chloe's, just because I think my belly is going to get that much bigger <laughs> having two babies in there. So at some point, I do anticipate seeing stretch marks, um, but so far, I haven't gotten any. Now, uh, during Chloe's pregnancy, I did get some of the kind of clearish white colored ones on my breasts, but they went away pretty quickly. I didn't really notice them sticking around. Um, so we'll keep an eye out for that too this time. Um, but other than that, I have not gotten any stretch marks so far, but I will keep you guys informed as the pregnancy goes on. If they show up, I will let you know. Okay guys, before I send you on your way, I'm gonna show you guys my baby bump. Thank you guys so much for stopping by and watching my video today. If you're not already a subscriber, I would appreciate it so much if you would hit that red subscribe button, join my family here on YouTube, be a part of this crazy life we've got ahead of us, and I would love it if you could also give this video a thumbs up because it really, really helps my channel out. Thank you guys again for stopping by. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. If you have any questions for me, make sure that you just drop them down in the comment section below and I will see you all in the next one. Love you babes. Bye.